What's up, world? It's Friday. Another day, another topic. Today's topic, well, since I got a few messages saying that my history safety on cars video wasn't intelligent enough, we're going to raise the intelligence quotient to at least 130. So if you don't have an IQ of 130, uh, try to stay with me. Now, I didn't take any physics classes or anything like that in college, so don't ask me how I taught myself physics. I guess I'm just smart enough to do that type of thing. All right, so today's intelligent topic is going to be kinematics. If you don't know what kinematics are, it's the analysis of the different positions and motions of objects as a function of time uh, without regarding to causes of motion. All right, so let's see if I can explain this. You have different type of kinetic equations. You have displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time. Your displacement is the same as your distance, which is going to equal x. Your velocity is going to be in meters per second. Your acceleration is in meters per second squared. And of course, your time is going to be and seconds. Alright, so to start out, we'll start out with initial velocity. A initial velocity is the distance over the time, which will lead to meters per second, or feet per second, or miles per hour, that's all velocity. Next, we have instant acceleration, which is the change in velocity, otherwise your final velocity minus your initial velocity over time which will equal meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Now before I continue, there's a few variables you must understand, such as the difference between a vector and a scalar. A vector is a physical quantity of motion that contains a uh, direction. For example, velocity or force. Force is newtons, which is kilogram meters per second squared, otherwise known as your mass times your acceleration. But that's another video. A scalar, on the other hand, is a physical quantity that does not contain a direction, such as temperature or time. Well, Matt, that's just great and all, except we don't need initial velocity or initial acceleration. What we need is the average velocity and average acceleration that you can get by taking the total displacement over the total time to change in velocity over the total time. The total time will give you the average. Now before I get into vector analysis, I must go over the different variables of the one dimension. Uh, first of all, we have initial velocity that I call V naught. You have your final velocity, Vf, time, T, your acceleration is going to be A, if it's positive, or G, which is the acceleration of gravity. Notice how it is negative. That's important, so you know to subtract the acceleration. And then D is displacement. But now things are going to start getting a little tricky. This is when your IQ needs to come in handy. This is how you figure out which variable you need. These are the different equations you have. If you're looking for your final velocity, which is number one, which will be a velocity as a function of time, your number two is going to be displacement varying with velocity and time. Your number three is going to be displacement as a function of just time. And your number four is going to be velocity as a function of the displacement. Now I have a graph over here that shows you which variables you're going to need and which ones you don't have. So for one, as you can see, you don't have D for displacement. You see D is not in number one. Number two, you don't have A. You don't have an acceleration because it's a varying with velocity and time. You may want to write these down because these are the one-dimensional kinematic equations that will help you solve for projectile motion in three dimensions that I will get into. Furthermore, number three, as you can see, does not contain a final velocity, but it does contain an initial velocity. And then, as you can see, for number four, your final velocity is ending up going to be squared. So you're actually going to get meters squared per second squared. 
Uh, we're not going to worry about that in this lesson, but in that lesson, you don't even know what time or how long it took that object to get from point A to point B. All you have is the distance, the acceleration, and the velocity that it started with. Alright, so now that we got that out of the way, hopefully you're still kind of uh, in tune with what I'm talking about. Let's get into two-dimensional kinematics, which actually involves vectoring. As you can see, here's a standard XY graph. This is your A, this is theta. Theta is the angle that you're going to try to find. Or, what I will go ahead and say is your angle that you're shooting your projectile out of. Whether it's a cannon or whatever. Alright, so hopefully you got that part down. Here's a vector graph. As you can see, I've added AY and AX. Those are your vectors for A. Once again, A is going to be your initial velocity. Your theta is going to be your original angle you're shooting out. Your vectors, such as, uh, let's see if I can get this, your VX equals AX and your VY equals AY. So if you look here, your AY is going to be your actual vertical uh, velocity and your AX is actually going to be your horizontal velocity. Your A is your diagonal velocity, I guess. Alright, so here's a basic graph of projectile motion. Here you have your initial Y velocities, your initial X velocities, right here. Here's your theta angle. As you can see, right here at the peak, your Y velocity is going to be zero because you're not going up anymore. And that's when you have gravity right here starts taking place. Now your initial X velocity is the same as your final X velocity because there is no acceleration or negative acceleration across this line. You only get acceleration due to gravity when you're dealing with vertical vectoring. Man, I hope this is intelligent enough for y'all because damn. Alright, it's time for a little trigonometry. Alright, trigonometry involves sine, cosine, and tangents. As you can see, you have, it. remember this, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, or SOHCAHTOA. That's how you're going to remember sine, cosine, and tangent. What we're going to work for is we're going to work on this sine, this sine question. As you can see, O over H, here's your theta. So sine is going to be this distance divided by this distance. Alright, so now for some algebra. Holy crap, this looks like a freaking trig class. Alright, anyway. Here's your sine and cosine, sine OH, cosine AH. Here is how you find, uh, first of all, here's an example, X and Y graph. Your H is at 100 meters per second, shooting at an angle, or a theta, of 45 degrees. So how do you solve for this? Well, your initial Y velocity, which you're looking for O, which would be your vertical, would be 100 times the sine of 45 gives you 85.1 meters per second vertically. Now for your VX initial, which is your horizontal displacement, which is looking for A, which would be this way, would be 100 times the cosine of 45. Now that cosine is going to do the A over H, which is going to help you find A, which equals 52.5 meters per second horizontally. All right, now for simplicity's sake, we are going to use equation number three, if you can remember, as a displacement of only time. So here you go. All right, so here is your initial y velocity, 85.1, your initial x velocity, 52.5, and well, we're just saying it took a total of two seconds from the time you launched your projectile to the time it hit the ground. Alright, so here is the variables 
plugged into the formula, you have 85.1 as your initial y velocity times 2 seconds plus half of a negative 9.8 because this A, this acceleration, is really the negative acceleration of gravity times 2 squared, which is 4. So that's 4 times a negative 9.8, so is a negative 39.2. Divide that in half, you get negative 19.6. So negative 19.6. 85.1 times 2 minus 19.6 equals 150.6. Alright, now what that means is from the time you launched your projectile to the time it hit the ground, it went a total of 150.6 meters into the air. It would have gone 170.2, but the 19.6 meters got deducted because that's the effect of gravity on a vertical launch projectile. Now furthermore, for your X displacement, which starts with 52.5 as your initial X velocity, times 2 seconds as the total amount of time it took, since there is no acceleration of gravity or any opposing force acting upon your x variable, your acceleration is going to be zero. So you're simply left with 52.5 times 2, which if I'm not mistaken is around 105. Alright, finally we get to our answers. If you launch a projectile at 100 meters per second, 45 degrees into the air, it will go 105 meters horizontally, 150.6 meters vertically. Right, so hopefully you've gotten to stick with me this far. I know it's been a confusing. Not everyone can teach themselves freaking rocket science, a three-dimensional vector physics. But here's how you would convert it into something you can use. If you have 105 meters per second, you have your meters per second, you want to change your meters, so you put your meter here at the bottom, you're looking for feet, there's 3.28 feet in a meter. So you simply multiply 105 by 3.28 and you get 344.4, so that's 344.4 feet per second because your meters cross out. So you're left with feet per second. If you don't understand feet per second, here's your feet per second. You put your feet down here at the bottom. You're looking for miles. So there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So you take 344.4. You would divide it by 5,280. That would give you a .065 miles per second. That is 65 thousandths of a mile per second. Now if that means nothing to you, you can change the seconds to hours. Here's your seconds. You want to put it opposite. You're looking for hours. There's 3600 seconds in one hour. So you take .065 and you multiply it by 3600. And now that that's out of the way, make sense of these questions is your initial uh, x velocity turns out 85.1 meters per second is 190.3 miles per hour and your initial y velocity which was 52.5 meters per second is now 117.409 miles per hour so now for the answers everything we've been waiting for after two seconds, which is our t time, our total y displacement, which was 150.6 meters times 3.28 feet per meter, comes to 493.97 feet. That's how far your projectile has gone up after two seconds. Your x displacement, which was 105 meters times 3.28 feet per meter, comes to 344.4 feet. That's how far your projectile has gone after two seconds of traveling at 100 meters per second at 45 theta or an angle. 
Now I hope that video was intelligent enough for you guys. Anyway, that's all I got. You'll have a happy, safe, merry Christmas, and I'll talk to y'all later.